Now, an American conductor, Marin Alsop, will make history this summer as the first woman in more than 100 years to conduct that great British institution the last night of the proms. This year's proms begin in July and will include everything from the TARDIS, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, to hip-hop, Nigel Kennedy and Wagner's ring cycle. The last night, here's a wild guess, will include Rule Britannia, Pomp and Circumstance and a lot of flags. We'll hear from Marin Alsop in a moment. First, here's Stephen Smith. This is the woman who will conduct the last night of the proms this year. Strangely, it tends to be men who waggle a little stick around in public. Is there a Freudian doctor in the house? Marin Alsop is musical director of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra and has done a lot to bring music to underprivileged youngsters in that city. But conducting the last night? Some say proms director Roger Wright fears a backlash. It's wonderful to have Marin Alsop as the conductor for the, for the last night and it seems such a natural development. Um, she's loved by the Fomm's audience. Uh, she was a, a big hit with her Sao Paulo Orchestra last year. Um, she's coming to conduct Brahms Requiem with the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment and then arriving uh, at this extraordinary moment at the end of the, the festival. And uh, she's going to be a, a perfect um, conductor for the last night in terms of the confidence and, and the range of music that she conducts so magnificently. The proms will include a selection of themes from Doctor Who. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, it's fantastic. And it, uh, I did it a couple of years ago. And I had a great time. And I did a little sketch there as well. I love the Albert Hall. I love the proms. I love classical music. Prom goers love the eccentric character who seems to have arrived from outer space. Oh yes, and violinist Nigel Kennedy will be there too. All right, cheers, guys. Whatever happened to? And the proms have gone punk. The Stranglers will likely be swatting away Union Jacks rather than dry ice on the big night. Can it be true? Punks are now as respectable as Brahms, Beethoven. Sir Mick Jagger. Got a nice pick. That made see his with proms audiences uh, and with audiences in, in general now, you know, they're, they're much less used to putting music in particular boxes. Um, and what it's about is a quality music experience. So when Jamie Cullum was at the proms, when Soft Machine was at the proms many, many years ago, this is about actually developing a, 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 an audience for quality music. <laughs> But the story making the headlines tomorrow, and who knows, making one or two of you fill your Mont Blancs with green ink, is Marin Alsop's turn on the rostrum on the last night. Things need to change, say some. In the institutions, we don't have very many women who are teachers, professors, and so on. And, and I think if that changed, if the balance changed a little bit there, then it may you know, help to inspire um, uh, women composers. In the sex war, Mazolsop's turn on the podium counts as a kind of baton round. Steve Smith there and Marin Alsop joins me now from Baltimore. Well, congratulations. How, how did it come about, the first woman in 118 years? Well, that sounds quite daunting, doesn't it? But uh, I've had the great privilege of conducting at the proms when I was the chief conductor of uh, the Bournemouth Symphony. I appeared twice with that great orchestra. And then last summer with my uh, orchestra from Brazil, we had an incredible uh, evening at the proms. So. Uh, I think this was just a natural outgrowth of that. Well, it's, it's great news. I don't know if you could hear Dame Evelyn Glennie there, who was saying, reflecting the fact that there's so few women, basically musical directors of major orchestras. Why is that? Well, I think it's, I think it's a matter of comfort level. As a society, we don't see women in these roles frequently enough. And uh, 
I think it's changing, but it's a slow change. And it's up to us, the women that are in these positions and the men in these positions, to create more opportunities for audiences and the public to see more women in these roles, particularly as conductor. I mean, you really have to have more opportunities to give it a try. Now, you're, you're talking to us from the great city of Baltimore, which musically people might remember Francis Scott Key a couple of hundred years ago composed the American National Anthem after being shelled by the British. I hope you're not going to do anything seditious on the last night of the proms and play something American, are you? Well, I've, I've got a lot of ammunition, let's <laughs> just say. Are you really looking forward to it? Because proms audiences are terrific, and the, but the last night is extraordinary. Oh, I'm, I'm, I can't tell you what a thrill it is. I, I, love, I love working with the British musicians, and uh, the audiences have been incredible. I, I really feel as though the UK is a, a second home to me, and I've felt that way since the moment I conducted, so I can't wait. Tell us a bit about uh, outreach and how, you know, we heard a little bit there about how people put music less in boxes than they used to. But you were also quite influenced by the Venezuelan El Sistema, the system of trying to get people in poorer areas where they may not have been interested in classical music to get involved. Tell us about that. Well, I feel strongly, as do so many of my uh, colleagues, that uh, music and art uh, should be accessible to every human being and uh, include everyone. And part of the issue is enabling kids to play instruments and be part of a musical ensemble from a very early age. And so here in Baltimore, we started an after-school program called Orchids. Um, uh, we started with 25 kids uh, five years ago, and now we have 600 kids. And as a matter of fact, tonight, I have a Scottish percussionist, uh, Colin Curry, performing with me, and my Orchids are doing an encore with him after uh, his concerto. So uh, you'll be well represented here in Baltimore tonight. <laughs> and, we, you know, we will expect, I suppose, Jerusalem and Land of Hope and Glory and all the favorites, will we? I mean, what, what, what else can we expect? Absolutely. But uh, as you say, I, I'm going to bring a, a little bit of America uh, with me and doing some music by Leonard Bernstein. The wonderful mezzo-soprano Joyce Di Donato will be appearing, as well as Nigel Kennedy. And uh, we just have some great repertoire, some Verdi, some Wagner, you know, something for everyone. So I, I think it'll be a great evening. And just, just a, f a final thought. I mean, uh, is this a big deal for you? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a big <laughs> deal. I, I think people in America don't quite get it. But uh, I've spent enough time in Britain, and, and especially in London, I get it. You get it. Okay, Marin also thanks yeah. very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for tonight. But we wanted to leave you with the news that Storm Thorgerson, the artist whose album covers included Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon, has died. He was 69. Good night. You know, in a way, artists are indulgent and are defined very much by doing the things they like doing, even if they do them in anguish. So even if you're talking about a suffering painter, he still paints what he likes.